Jewish music is the music and melodies of the Jewish people. There exist both traditions of religious music, as sung at the synagogue and domestic prayers, and of secular music, such as klezmer. While some elements of Jewish music may originate in biblical times, differences of rhythm and sound can be found among later Jewish communities that have been musically influenced by location. In the 19th century, religious reform led to composition of ecclesiastic music in the styles of classical music. At the same period, academics began to treat the topic in the light of ethnomusicology. Edward Sarusi has written, "...what is known as Jewish music today is thus the result of complex historical processes." A number of modern Jewish composers have been aware of and influenced by the different traditions of Jewish music. <laughs> Religious Jewish music Religious Jewish music in the Biblical period The history of religious Jewish music spans the evolution of cantorial, synagogial, and temple melodies since Biblical times. The earliest synagogial music of which we have any account was based on the system used in the temple in Jerusalem. The Mishnah gives several accounts of temple music. According to the Mishnah, the regular temple orchestra consisted of twelve instruments, and a choir of twelve male singers. The instruments included the kinor lyre, nevel harp, shofar ram's horn, hatzatzrat trumpet, and three varieties of pipe, the chalil, alamith, and the ugav. The temple orchestra also included a cymbal ziltzel, made of copper. The Talmud also mentions use in the temple of a pipe organ magrepha, and states that the water organ was not used in the temple as its sounds were too distracting. No provable examples of the music played at the temple have survived. After the destruction of the temple in 70 AD and the subsequent dispersion of the Jews to Babylon and Persia, versions of the public singing of the temple were continued in the new institution of the synagogue. Three musical forms were identified by scholars of the period, involving different modes of antiphonal response between cantor congregation, the cantor singing a half verse at a time, with the congregation making a constant refrain, the cantor singing a half verse, with the congregation repeating exactly what he had sung, and the cantor and congregation singing alternate verses. All of these forms can be discerned in parts of the modern synagogue service. Topic. Jewish prayer modes. Jewish liturgical music is characterized by a set of musical modes. These modes make up musical nusik, which serves to both identify different types of prayer, as well as to link those prayers to the time of year, or even time of day in which they are set. There are three main modes, as well as a number of combined or compound modes. The three main modes are called Ahava Rabbah, Magain Avit and Adonai Malik. Traditionally, the cantor chazen improvised sung prayers within the designated mode, while following a general structure of how each prayer should sound. There was no standard form of musical notation utilized by the Jews and these modes and synagogue melodies derived from them were therefore handed down directly, typically from a chazen to his apprentice meshar descant. Since the late 18th century, many of these chants have been written down and standardized, yet the practice of improvisation still exists to this day. The synagogal reading of the parasha, the weekly extract from the Torah, and the haftarah, section from the prophets, may recall the melodic tropes of the actual temple service. Ashkenazic Jews named this official cantillation neganot, and it is represented in printed Hebrew versions of the Bible by a system of cantillation marks, sometimes referred to as nooms. In practice the cantillation often echoes the tones and rhythms of the countries and ages in which Jews lived, notably as regards the modality in which the local music was based. Topic. Traditional religious music Synagogues following traditional Jewish rites do not employ musical instruments as part of the synagogue service. Traditional synagogal music is therefore purely vocal. The principal melodic role in the service is that of the hazan cantor. Responses of the congregation are typically monophonic. The introduction of a choir singing in harmony was largely a 19th-century innovation. However, during the medieval period among Ashkenazi Jews there developed the tradition of the Hazan being accompanied for certain prayers by a bass voice known in Yiddish as singer and a descant in Yiddish, meshar. This combination was known in Yiddish as kelikomos. There are many forms of song which are used in Jewish religious services and ceremonies. The following are notable examples. 
with the Piyutam liturgical poems, singular, piyat, dating from the first millennium after the destruction of the temple, one stream of Jewish synagogal music began to crystallize into definite form. The Hazan sang the Piyutam to melodies either selected by themselves or drawn from tradition. Piyutam have been written since Mishnaic times. Most Piyutam are in Hebrew or Aramaic, and most follow some poetic scheme, such as an acrostic following the order of the Hebrew alphabet or spelling out the name of the author. A well-known Piyyut is Adon Olam, master of the world, sometimes attributed to Solomon ibn Gabriel in 11th century Spain. Pismanim are traditional Jewish songs and melodies praising God and describing certain aspects of traditional religious teachings. Pismanim are traditionally associated with Middle Eastern Sephardic Jews, although they are related to Ashkenazi Jews Zemirat see below. One tradition is associated with Jews descended from Aleppo, though similar traditions exist among Iraqi Jews where the songs are known as Shbai Hoth, praises and in North African countries. Jews of Greek, Turkish, and Balkan origin have songs of the same kind in Ladino, associated with the festivals, these are known as coplas. Some melodies are quite old, while others may be based on popular Middle Eastern music, with the words composed specially to fit the tune. Zemirat are hymns, usually sung in the Hebrew or Aramaic languages, but sometimes also in Yiddish or Ladino. The words to many Zemirat are taken from poems written by various rabbis and sages during the Middle Ages. Others are anonymous folk songs. The Bakashat are a collection of supplications, songs, and prayers that have been sung for centuries by the Sephardic Aleppian Jewish community and other congregations every Sabbath Eve from midnight until dawn. The custom of singing Bakashat originated in Spain towards the time of the expulsion, but took on increased momentum in the Kabbalistic circle in Safed in the 16th century, and were spread from Safed by the followers of Isaac Luria 16th century. Bakashat reached countries all around the Mediterranean and even became customary for a time in Sephardic communities in Western Europe, such as Amsterdam and London. Nigan place nigumum refers to religious songs and tunes that are sung either by individuals or groups, they are associated with the Hasidic movement. Nigunum are generally wordless. 19th century synagogue music Changes in European Jewish communities, including increasing political emancipation and some elements of religious reform, had their effects on music of the synagogue. By the late 18th century, music in European synagogues had sunk to a low standard. Charles Burney visiting the Ashkenazi Synagogue of Amsterdam in 1772, wrote, at my first entrance, one of the priests i.e. the Hazan was chanting part of the service in a kind of ancient canto ferma, and responses were made by the congregation, in a manner which resembled the hum of bees. After this three of the sweet singers of Israel began singing a kind of jolly modern melody, sometimes in unison and sometimes in parts, to a kind of tal de rol, instead of words, which to me, seemed very farcical. At the end of each strain, the whole congregation set up such a kind of cry, as a pack of hounds when a fox breaks cover. It is impossible for me to divine what idea the Jews themselves annex to this vociferation. In England however the singing of the Chazan Maya Leone inspired the Methodist minister Thomas Olivers in 1770 to adapt the melody of the hymn Yigdal for a Christian hymn, The God of Abraham Praise. Many synagogue melodies were used by Isaac Nathan in his 1815 settings of Lord Byron's Hebrew melodies, and the popularity of this work drew the attention of Gentiles for the first time to this music although in fact many of Nathan's melodies were not Jewish in origin, but contrafacta adapted from European folk melodies. Franz Schubert around 1828 made a choral setting of Psalm chapter 92 in Hebrew for the Vienna Chazen Solomon Sulzer. German congregations commissioned works from other Gentile composers, including Albert Methfessel (1785–1869). Later in the century, as synagogues began to utilize choirs singing in Western harmony, a number of Hazanim, who had received formal training in Western music, began to compose works for the synagogue. Many of which are still in use today in the congregations of their countries. These included Sulzer in Vienna, Samuel Nomborg in Paris, Louis Lewandowski in Berlin, and Julius Mombach in London. Topic: <laughs> Contemporary Jewish religious music. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Secular Jewish music. 
Secular Jewish music and dances have been influenced both by surrounding Gentile traditions and Jewish sources preserved over time. Topic: <laughs> Klezmer. Around the 15th century, a tradition of secular non-liturgical Jewish music was developed by musicians called klezmorim or klezmerim by Ashkenazi Jews in Eastern Europe. The repertoire is largely dance songs for weddings and other celebrations. They are typically in Yiddish. Topic: <laughs> Sephardic Ladino. Sephardic music was born in medieval Spain, with canciones being performed at the royal courts. Since then, it has picked up influences from across Spain, Morocco, Argentina, Turkey, Greece, and various popular tunes from Spain and further abroad. There are three types of Sephardic songs. Topical and entertainment songs, romance songs and spiritual or ceremonial songs. Lyrics can be in several languages, including Hebrew for religious songs, and Ladino. These song traditions spread from Spain to Morocco the Western tradition and several parts of the Ottoman Empire the Eastern tradition including Greece, Jerusalem, the Balkans and Egypt. Sephardic music adapted to each of these locals, assimilating North African high-pitched, extended ululations, Balkan rhythms, for instance in 9 eighths time, and the Turkish makam mode. Topic. Jewish art music topic. Preclassical, classical, romantic and 20th century composers Salomon Rossi 1570 c. 1630 of Mantua composed a series of choral settings called the Songs of Solomon, based on Jewish liturgical and biblical texts. Most art musicians of Jewish origin in the 19th century composed music that cannot be considered Jewish in any sense. In the words of Peter Gradenwitz, from this period onwards, the issue is, "...no longer the story of Jewish music, but the story of music by Jewish masters." Jacques Offenbach 1819 a leading composer of operetta in the 19th century, was the son of a cantor, and grew up steeped in traditional Jewish music. Yet there is nothing about his music which could be characterized as Jewish in terms of style, and he himself did not consider his work to be Jewish. Felix Mendelssohn, the grandson of the Jewish philosopher Moses Mendelssohn, continued to acknowledge his Jewish origins, even though he was baptized as a Reformed Christian at the age of seven. He occasionally drew inspiration from Christian sources, but there is nothing characteristically Jewish about any of his music. Topic: The Jewish National Revival in Art Music. At the end of the 19th and beginning of the 20th centuries, many Jewish composers sought to create a distinctly Jewish national sound in their music. Notable among these were the composers of the St. Petersburg Society for Jewish Folk Music. Led by composer critic Joel Engel, these graduates of the St. Petersburg and Moscow conservatories rediscovered their Jewish national roots and created a new genre of Jewish art music. Inspired by the nationalist movement in Russian music, exemplified by Rimsky Korsakov, Kui, and others, these Jewish composers set out to the shtetls, the Jewish villages of Russia, and meticulously recorded and transcribed thousands of Yiddish folk songs. They then set these songs to both vocal and instrumental ensembles. The resulting music is a marriage between often melancholy and krechtsen, moaning melodies of the shtetl with late Russian romantic harmonies of Skriabin and Rachmaninoff. The Jewish national revival in music was not only in Russia. A number of Western European composers took an interest in their Jewish musical roots, and tried to create a unique Jewish art style. Ernest Bloch 1880 a Swiss composer who emigrated to the United States, composed Shelomo for cello and orchestra, Sweet Hebraic for violin and piano, and Sacred Service, which is the first attempt to set the Jewish service in a form similar to the Requiem, for full orchestra, choir and soloists. Bloch described his connection to Jewish music as intensely personal. It is not my purpose, nor my desire, to attempt a reconstitution of Jewish music, or to base my work on melodies more or less authentic. I am not an archaeologist. It is the Jewish soul that interests me. The freshness and naivete of the patriarchs, the violence of the prophetic books, the Jewish savage love of justice. 
As a child in Aix and Provence, Darius Milhaud (1892–1974) was exposed to the music of the Provençal Jewish community. I have been greatly influenced by the character of this music, he wrote. His opera Esther de Carpentras draws on this rich musical heritage. Mario Castelnuovo Tedesco (1895–1968), an Italian composer who immigrated to America on the eve of World War II, was strongly influenced by his Sephardic Jewish upbringing. His second violin concerto draws on Jewish themes, as do many of his songs and choral works. These include a number of songs in Ladino, the language of Sephardic Jews. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Israeli music. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Art music in Mandatory Palestine and Israel. The 1930s saw an influx of Jewish composers to British colonial mandatory Palestine territory, later Palestine, Transjordan and Israel, among them musicians of stature in Europe. These composers included Paul Ben Chaim, Eric Walter Sternberg, Mark Lavery, Odin Patas, and Alexander Uriah Boscovich. These composers were all concerned with forging a new Jewish identity in music, an identity which would suit the new, emerging identity of Israel. While the response of each of these composers to this challenge was intensely personal, there was one distinct trend to which many of them adhered. Many of these and other composers sought to distance themselves from the musical style of the klezmer, which they viewed as weak and unsuitable for the new national ethos. Many of the stylistic features of klezmer were abhorrent to them. Its character is depressing and sentimental, wrote music critic and composer Manash Ravina in 1943. The healthy desire to free ourselves of this sentimentalism causes many to avoid this. From these early experiments a large corpus of original Israeli art music has been developed. Modern Israeli composers include Betty Olivero, Sippy Fleischer, Mark Kopitman and Yitzhak Yedid. Topic: <laughs> Israeli folk From the earliest days of Zionist settlement, Jewish immigrants wrote popular folk music. At first, songs were based on borrowed melodies from German, Russian, or traditional Jewish folk music with new lyrics written in Hebrew. Starting in the early 1920s, however, Jewish immigrants made a conscious effort to create a new Hebrew style of music, a style that would tie them to their earliest Hebrew origins and that would differentiate them from the style of the Jewish diaspora of Eastern Europe, which they viewed as weak. This new style borrowed elements from Arabic and, to a lesser extent, traditional Yemenite and Eastern Jewish styles. The songs were often homophonic, that is, without clear harmonic character, modal, and limited in range. The huge change in our lives demands new modes of expression, wrote composer and music critic Manash Ravina in 1943. And, just as in our language we return to our historical past, so has our ear turned to the music of the East as an expression of our innermost feelings." The youth, labor and kibbutz movements played a major role in musical development before and after the establishment of Israeli statehood in 1948, and in the popularization of these songs. The Zionist establishment saw music as a way of establishing a new national identity, and, on a purely pragmatic level, of teaching Hebrew to new immigrants. The National Labor Organization, the Histadrit, set up a music publishing house that disseminated songbooks and encouraged public sing-alongs. This tradition of public sing-alongs continues to the present day, and is a characteristic of modern Israeli culture. Mizrahi <inaudible> 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 Mizrahi music usually refers to the new wave of music in Israel which combines Israeli music with the flavor of Arabic and Mediterranean especially Greek music. Typical Mizrahi songs will have a dominant violin or string sound as well as Middle Eastern percussion elements. Mizrahi music is usually high-pitched. In today's Israeli music scene, Mizrahi music is very popular. A popular singer whose music typifies the Mizrahi music style is Zohar Argov. Non-Jewish composers using Jewish music A number of non-Jewish composers have adapted Jewish music to their compositions. They include Maurice Ravel wrote Melodies Ebraiques for violin and piano. 
Max Bruch, a German Protestant, but a student of the German Jewish composer Ferdinand Hiller, made an arrangement, Kol Nidre, of the Jewish Yom Kippur prayer Kol Nidre for cello and orchestra. Sergei Prokofiev wrote overture on Hebrew themes, an arrangement of traditional Jewish folk songs for clarinet, string quartet, and piano. Dmitry Shostakovich incorporated elements of Jewish music in some of his compositions. Most notable are the Song Cycle from Jewish Folk Poetry, and the Thirteenth Symphony, titled Babi Yar. See also List of Jewish musicians Klezmer References Bibliography <references> 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 Bernie, Charles, ed. Percy A. Scholes An Eighteenth-Century Musical Tour in Central Europe and the Netherlands. Vols. London, Oxford University Press. Conway, David Jury in Music, Entry to the Profession from the Enlightenment to Richard Wagner. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. ISBN 978-1-107-01538-8. Gradenwitz, Peter The Music of Israel from the Biblical Era to Modern Times, 2nd, edition. Portland, Amadeus Press. Idelson, A. Z., Thesaurus of Hebrew Oriental Song Idelson, A. Z., Int. A. Orenstein Jewish Music, Its Historical Development. New York, Dover. Sarusi, Edwin et al., N. D. Jewish Music. In Oxford Music Online, subscription required. Walden, Joshua S. 2015. The Cambridge Companion to Jewish Music. Cambridge and New York: Cambridge University Press. Topic. Further reading. Rabinovich, Israel of Jewish Music: Ancient and Modern. Trans. From the Yiddish by A. M. Klein. Topic. External links London Jewish Male Choir, perform wide range of Jewish music Jewish Sheet Music Archive Milken Archive of Jewish Music The Dartmouth Jewish Sound Archive Jewish Music Research Center Judaica Sound Archives at Florida Atlantic University Libraries The Jewish Music Web Center Music and the Holocaust Articles, Images and Recordings of Music of 1933-1945. A list of Jewish composers with sheet music published by imslp.com.